Whew. Well, the comment section on this one's going to be interesting. It'll be fun to read. So yeah, I traded off the Canon R5, and yes, I traded in for a Nikon camera, the Z9. I'm sure you all have questions like, uh, why'd you get rid of the Canon R5? Is there something wrong with Canon R5? Uh, why'd you get a Nikon when you've always shot Canon? And I'm sure the final question you guys have on your mind is, am I leaving Canon? Well, let's talk about it. Okay, let's start off. Why did I move on from the Canon R5? Is there something wrong with the R5? Is something missing? Well, no, really. It's an amazing camera, and it's so far it's the best Canon camera I've used to date. Uh, it's got one of the best autofocus systems so far. The R7 and the R3 advanced that a little bit, but it's still really close to those two. It's got great image quality at 45 megapixels, and it's really a true successor of the 5D4 in a mirrorless format. And even more on that, it, it moved the 5 Series to me into a true wildlife camera where the 5D Mark IV was about 7 frames a second if you're lucky and it moved that up to 12 frames to 20 frames a second. And with that 45 megapixel sensor and a fast readout sensor which minimized the rolling shutter and had an AF system, autofocus system that just didn't miss, it really brought that into a wildlife camera. Uh, the camera also has amazing weather sealing, and believe me, I tested it hard up here in Alaska and, and rain, snow, cold, dust, sand, everything. I really ran it hard, and it always performed. Only one time did it ever not perform, and that was due to I just got pumice in the buttons, and the buttons started seizing up. But that was easily fixed by using a silicone cover or just keeping your hands clean and not getting all that dirt and grime inside the camera buttons. Uh, also, that camera can take a beating. There's more than once when I was carrying it with the 500 Prime where the strap hit the uh, lens release button and the whole body came off and hit the ground several times. But that camera kept working, never missed a beat, never had a problem, and uh, pretty tough little camera. Uh, the R5 handling, feel, menus, buttons, dial placements, they're all pretty top notch and, and they were dead on for my style of shooting basically. So in all, I couldn't have been happier with the Canon R5 and how it performed, but there's always a but, isn't there? Uh, the things for me on the R5 that I wish it had, these are the buts that did limit a little bit for me. Again, these are really small, stupid little things. One was no sound assignment at the 20 frames per second, you know, when I got silent. So that limited pretty much because I wouldn't shoot 20 very often because I couldn't hear anything. I didn't know how many shots I was taking, so I would stay with 12 frames a second. Uh, the second thing, and this is just me, that would be 30 minute time limit recording. And that's really for me for the studio work, not really for the wildlife work. And the R5 has a great sensor, but it's still a middle of the line sensor. It's not a 1DX Mark III or it's not an R5 or an R3, excuse me, sensor. It's not that pro line sensor. It's pretty close. It's a good sensor, but it's pretty close. Um, even though the images are great and everything, I really wanted something more out of that sensor to push more of the way the image looked and the way the image performed as far as dynamic range. And the thing for me also is over the last year I've been really wanting that flagship camera to come out or some announcement about that flagship camera and to get it in my hands. And to me, cameras are tools and I'm not really a brand guy. I'm not like a Canon, Sony or a Nikon guy. I'm not really married to like this is the only camera I ever want to shoot this brand's the only one I want to shoot they're all tools they're all good but the other problem is you know what sticks you at a camera is your lenses so I have a lot of money invested in Canon lenses I have pretty much all the lenses except for one that I want and uh, that's the 4028 but I do have the 500 f4 so that pretty much works and that pretty close to it but that's a lot of money invested in glass and that's what kind of have kept me with Canon as opposed to any other brand. Because it's just hard to switch over to another brand if you've got all this glass, you have to switch over the body and all the glass. So that's what usually limits people from jumping brands. Uh, so you may ask, why not go with the R3? Because, you know, that's pretty much the flagship for Canon. And if you guys 
watched my channel, you know what my thoughts are on the Canon R3. Phenomenal camera, probably the best out there, but the megapixels is too low. 24 megapixels for me is too low for wildlife photography for me. Uh, so pretty much the R3 is just a no-go for me. And so back to it for the last year, the camera I've been really wanting, and you guys have already got jump ahead of me already knowing, that's the Canon R1. I've been hoping for the last year that Canon is going to give us some type of development announcement or some type of, uh, here's some features that the camera will have or may have or something like that, but nothing's come out. And with the additions of the R3, the R7, and the Canon R6 Mark II with all these new features with these faster sensors, backs had eliminated the way they are past 30 frames a second through in RAW, uh, the autofocus, all that stuff, I know whatever they put out for the R1 is going to be something special, especially if they keep that megapixel up there, which we're guessing of you know, 50 megapixels plus. Um, so at the end of last year, to level set a little bit more, we had a lot of rumors coming out saying the spring of 2022 we we're going to have a development or some type of announcement on the R1. March came along, nothing. Next rumor saying, oh, the summer we're definitely going to have something, nothing. Then we get into the fall and now finally we're getting where they're saying, hey, the R1 is probably not going to be put out till 2024. So it's another year plus from now. So really for Canon, there's no flagship coming out until 2024, probably late 2023 at the earliest. Now, the R5 Mark II may come out next fall, but if the R1's right on its heels, I probably won't pick up the R5 Mark II. I'll probably test it and stuff and mess with it, but I probably won't buy it. And why is that? Well, it's finances. Uh, the R1's probably going to be $6,000. <clears> And the R5 Mark II is probably going to be 4000 4, with inflation the way it's going. So that's $10,000. That's just way too rich for my blood. So I think while well, my end goal setup is going to be, you know, at that time, would be like the R1 plus the R7. You know, a really inexpensive body. I don't worry about tearing up. That will give me extra reach. And it does, you know, 80% of the things I need to do. And then i got my R1, which is my pro body, to do all the fun, fancy things I want to do. But, there's always buts, right? Always again. That's over a year out. And I've been itching more and more and more over the last year for something just a little bit more. I've been reviewing the R7 and the R10 and those type cameras, which I'm enjoying. But my R5 is still my baby as far as really getting good images. But I still just wanted a little bit more out of that sensor. I wanted a little more pro quality and dynamic range out of the sensor. Not, not The R5 gives you great images, but I just wanted a little bit more. Now back to the money angle of acquiring and upgrading gear. It's expensive, guys, and you guys know that. And I don't get any free or reduced gear or loaners or anything from anybody. I gotta pay for all this stuff myself just like you guys do. So that's what I'm always thinking about, purchase price and trade-in values. So getting to that R1, I'm guessing it'll be about $6,000. And that's gonna require some serious consideration on what to trade in and what to sell and what kind of cash to get to get into that. So I'm not, cause I'm just, I can't just plop down $6,000 without trading and selling some stuff off. So with that being said, the R5 value has been dropping pretty drastically. I don't know if you guys follow the, the trade-in or purchase prices, but it's due to there's a lot of R5s out there and it's two plus years in age already. And with the R7 and the R6 Mark II coming in, uh, that helps also the R7 price slipping. And by the time the R1 comes out, the R5 is going to be hitting bottom of the trading value, especially if the R5 Mark II is out, uh, if it beats the R1 to market. Monetarily, if I could trade in the camera now, uh, it's still got some pretty decent value. It'd save me some money for one. So keep that in mind here in a minute. Uh, right now, the R5s are going for about two and a half to three thousand dollars selling them used. Uh, next year's and probably when that R5 Mark II comes out, those things will be dropping down to one and a half to two thousand dollars at best. So if I wanted to move to a top of the line sensor or a flagship type camera, that means I'd have to pick up another camera brand or manufacturer for that type of camera. Because like I said before, it's going to be a year or more out before Canon has its type of camera and that, that style of camera, you know, top line sensor, flagship camera, yada yada. So the really for me, for me, the two options were the Sony A1 and the Nikon Z9. I know there's other cameras, but those are the two that really, to me, speak to being the top of the line wildlife and sensors and type of camera. 
Uh, so let's talk about the A1 first. Uh, a couple things on this camera. Uh, yes, the sensor and the A1 and the Xenon are the same sensor, but they have different color science processors and all the algorithms and all that stuff. So even though they're the same sensor, they act completely different. And for some reason on the A1, the perception, the feel about it, I'm just not real keen on the camera. Uh, little things to me that kind of bother me about it. There's no integrated battery grip. Really, if you're doing a pro body on an integrated grip, uh, I know why they didn't. Um, weather sealing on the A1 and the lenses are a little suspect at times from what I can see and research. Uh, and what I was talking about, the no integrated battery, well, I know it's not there. Sony, to me, is more of an entertainment company, entertainment type camera, as opposed to a wildlife centered camera brand like Nikon and Canon are to me. And that, again, that's just me and my perceptions without testing the A1, right? And I know it's got a blazing great autofocus, and fast frames per second, things like that. And sometime soon, I will go out and test the A1 to get a better understanding of it so I can make a more informed comment when I'm talking about these things. So please, don't kill me in the comments about the A1 or the things I said here. Those are just my feelings. So you guys that are A1 fans and in that camp Sony, don't kill me on that, okay? Uh, I'm not tribal, so let's not be tribal here in the comments, too. I know you're going to get me anyway. Uh, and also on top of that, the A1 Mark II could be coming out before the R1 comes out, or probably an announcement right on the heels of it. And I also felt like, uh, you know, with all those things I felt like, and that camera being six and a half thousand dollars a thousand dollars more than the Z9, it still was kind of hard for me to swallow the A1. So that really just left me the Nikon Z9 is the only real current kind of top of the line upgrade uh, for me that I've seen. And even though the camera came out 11 months ago, it still feels really new because it was really hard for me to get hold of these cameras until just this fall. There's been some more, a lot more bodies have been showing up in the, the lower 48 and into the United States. I put a lot of thought into a body upgrade, as I said earlier, over the last year. And since the summer, when I really saw that, hey, the R1's just not coming out this year, uh, my thoughts started going to those other brands. And on top of that, most of my Alaska shooting peers, photographers, uh, about 70% of them shoot Nikon. And a couple of those guys that were NPS guys, that's Nikon Professional Services. And it's, it's actually kind of still hard to get that as opposed to the Canon Professional Services, which pretty much is just, if you buy enough cameras, you can be a CPS guy. Um, so I've pretty much seen what that camera's capable of from those guys and actually had a chance to kind of pick the camera up. Now I could never go rent one because again, nobody has the Z9 in the store for rentals. It's really hard to get hold of. Like I said, I was able to see what that camera is capable of. You know, the 20 frames per second in RAW, 120 in JPEG, which you probably wouldn't use, but the 20 frames is nice. Really good autofocus, and I'm a bit curious how good it is, as my Nikon buddies just really swear by it. But the Canon pros I've seen that I've used the camera also were kind of like it, it, the autofocus to them was lacking compared to Canon. So I'm really curious which camp is true, my Nikon buddies or the Canon pros. And for me that I've, well, you know, I shot the Canon and now I can go play with the Nikon. What's that autofocus really like? So I was really curious about what that would do. Uh, the sensor on this camera is really good. The images that come at it look really good. What I've seen so far, it's a backside illuminated stent sensor, stacked. So there's no rolling shutter on that camera. And I love the Nikon color science. It's really good with the warm tones and the browns and the oranges. And for what I shoot here in Alaska, that's really good because that's really a lot of stuff I have. I have those browns and oranges with the animals and the, the light and stuff like that. I just noodled John, the bear guy, and I noodled his camera quite a bit, and it, it felt really good in the hands. Now, things foreign as all get out. It's, I, I tried to reach for the shutter. I miss it. I tried to reach for uh, ISO and apertures. I'm just missing where the buttons are because they're all in completely different places. But, but, but it didn't feel too bad in the hand. And then finally for the Z9, financially, I don't see in 2024 the Z9 II coming out. It could, but I believe it's going to be 2025 because you know you really got to get about three years into that camera plus before you know they're going to pop out a new one. So the trade-in on the, the Z9, if I were to trade it in for the R1, is going to hold value really well. So I'll get most of the money back out of that camera when I would sell it. So that was... Uh, one of the other reasons for the Z9 was that financially getting into the R1, or maybe I love the Z9 and I stick with it, who, who knows what would happen with it. 
but it's all still a gamble. Nothing's safe, you know, with trade-ins and sell prices. But, you know, all this was just thoughts in my head and considerations and no actions are being taken. I'm just really running the numbers and looking at, you know, what my options are when the Canon R1 does come out. Well, until I stopped by Stewart's one day, picking up some paper for the printer, and I look over on the shelf and I see a nine, Z9. So I asked Bill, oh, you got a Z9? And he goes, yeah, we just got it yesterday. I've been trying to get these in forever. Um, so what you see, guys, is the reason I didn't really consider making that jump to the Z9 was there wasn't one out there. Couldn't find them online, didn't see them in the shop. But here's one right in front of me. So my brain starts going in overdrive. Now, no longer is that thing, hey, I'm just thinking about it and I'm just curious what the numbers would be because I can't get hold of one. Now there's one I can't get hold of. So then my brain kicks into the reality of there is a chance you can pick this up if you want to. So my brain's just firing off. So this is the morning when I'm looking at the paper. So I go out in the afternoon looking for spruce grouse and I found some spruce grouse off a of gravel road and I'm laying there on the ground shooting those birds and I'm sitting here thinking in my head, because that Z9, I'm still seeing that Z9 thinking about it. Because remember, I've for a year been wanting a better or a more pro-line sensor for my camera. And I'm sitting there thinking, uh, would I regret not having my R5 and having the Z9? Because that's a big jump and it's a big monetary jump and uh, brand jump, things like that. And my brain says to me, you know what, you've been shooting the R5 for two plus years. It's time to try something new. And that was just it. I was done. I figured out I'm going to go do it. And you know, I've always wanted to try Nikon. And the main reason I never have is I just, just making that lens jump and the body jump and all that is just too much to do. And to be honest with you guys, the real thing came down like I was sitting there thinking, I just really wanted to try something new. I just wanted to do something different. I've been shooting the same stuff forever. I just wanted to try something new. So I swung by that shop later that afternoon about close to close, talked to Bill, said, hey, if I trade in my R5 and some other stuff, and you know, what, what could we get close to on the price of that Z9? And so Bill said, all right, I'll take that and we'll look at it and I'll call you in the morning. So the next day, Bill calls me and says, yeah, trading condition's good, come on in. So now I'm the proud owner of a Nikon Z9. Boy, it's scary and exciting at the same time. So let's unbox this guy real fast. So I'm super excited about this camera and being able to use it and shoot with it. It's it just, you know, it's got my juices flowing again. I don't like that they weren't flowing already because I love photography and I love Alaska doing this stuff. Uh, it's going to be weird though because the button layout I know is completely different and the menus Oh lord, the menus are completely different when I looked at in this thing uh, Much more complex than a Canon in the setup And like I said earlier, I'm just curious to see how much is true from what all my Nikon buddies are telling me of you know about the setting and the focus and what the YouTube folks are seeing so uh, I'm really really curious to see what this is going to look like so yeah, this is the Nikon Z9. It is a chunky little boy. It is heavier than my Canon R5 with the battery grip. It's a pretty chunky little guy. And yes, these buttons are all in the wrong place. This is gonna be a nightmare. Uh, for starters, the shutter button is behind the uh, front dial, which is backwards on a Canon. You got the shutter button in the farthest front and back behind that's the dial. So I can see me being really slow with this camera, hitting the right buttons, that's gonna be fun. Um, it's gonna be fun to figure this guy out. So guys, probably the most important thing you wanna know now, for me, since I got this Nikon Z9, are you leaving Canon? Are you done with Canon? And the answer to that's no. I'm invested way too heavily in Canon glass. And I want that R1. I've been dying for that R1. It's gonna be a doozy. Can't wait for it. But in the meantime, I can shoot this Nikon Z9. Uh, but yeah, I'm not leaving Canon, I, but I am enjoying going to be able to finally play with the Nikon Z9, see what the Z9 offers, see what Nikon offers, and enjoy shooting that to learn more of it. And also just to find out what everybody's, all the tribalism saying to know about a Nikon Z9 from a Canon shooter like myself. At least the other big burning question, guys. I just said I'm not leaving Canon. I'm investing in Canon glass. 
I don't own a Z9 or Nikon lens. I don't own one of them. And I can't afford to have one rented for, for, for a year. And I have picked up the Nikon 200 to 500 5.6, pretty nice for the focal range, uh, because it's $1,000, so I picked it up. But that doesn't do this camera justice. Uh, you really need to be shooting a big prime, just like I do with my Canon, because I can even shoot the R10 with that 500 f4 and get great images because it's good glass. So pairing good glass with a good sensor is really where you shine. So it's kind of silly to put a medium to lower level lens on this big expensive body. Uh, but how am I going to do that? I can't afford to go sell off all my Canon glass and buy Nikon glass because I have to sell a lot of stuff to get one lens for this thing at the prime level. And I'm, I, just, I just can't do that. So that's where this little device comes in handy. So this little thing solves my problem for glass with this Nikon Z9 body. But you're going to have to wait till the next video to find out what this is and how it solves my problem. Just look forward to that one. Now, hopefully coming out in less than a week because this should come on the heels of this video. Now to the next part of this video um, is the print giveaway. We hit 3,000 subscribers, guys. Thank you. Amazing. I didn't think I'd have 300 subscribers, let alone 3,000 subscribers. It just blows my mind to have that many people subscribe to the channel and all the comments and the feedback you guys leave. So with that being said, I'm going to do another thank you to you guys and give another print away. This one's going to be a 13 by 19 print, and it's going to be uh, this print over here that you guys voted on. This is the one out of the four that I gave you a solution for, uh, and you guys picked this one. So also, always go check the community board, stay subscribed, bell notifications, all that stuff, so you're abreast of these giveaways, who won, how to vote on it, and I, so I'll leave polls from time to time to ask you guys things about the channel so you can help me grow this channel. So how to enter this photo contest. All you have to do in the comments, leave me, tell me how long you've been subscribed to the channel and tell me what kind of camera and what kind of body that you're using and what kind of lens you're using that you shoot every day. Just leave that, you're entered automatically into the drawing and I'll just pull a name at random out of the hat and see who won it. And I'll announce that in the next video. So probably about less than a week from now, boom, we'll have it. So you only have a short amount of time to enter this next giveaway. Uh, so guys, yeah, thank you very much for subscribing to the channel, for staying with me for this journey so far in this year. And uh, I've also enabled channel, mem me uh, channel memberships. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, channel memberships. That's as low as a dollar. It's just a way to tip me and help me help grow things so I can do things like this, afford to do this. Um, Doing this channel is expensive and photography is expensive. So every little bit helps, guys. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, enter for that chance to win the drawing for the photo contest. And I'll see you on the next episode. And I shall shut up and quit babbling. You guys take care.